Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and welcome back to another video. And this video is going to be called How to Study and Improve. And this is the kind of question I get a lot from students and prospective students as far as how do I study, how do I get more out of my study time, and sometimes even just what do I study. And these are all very important questions, and if you're going to become a better poker player, if you're going to become the best poker player you can, you need to put in some time studying. And that means more than just going through hand histories mindlessly, clicking through them, and then going on to the next hand history. It's more than just that, and that's what I want to talk about today as far as how do you look at a hand history, what kind of things are you looking for, and how do you go beyond just the single hand history. That's how you're ultimately going to become the best poker player you can be. So what we're going to do is go through a collection of hand histories. These were all full ring hands that broke down to six-handed, so some of the HUD stats will still look full ring-esque. And we're just going to talk about them, talk about how I would study them, what I'm looking for, and hopefully this obviously helps you study and improve as well. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it and start having some fun. Okay, in this first hand we have pocket fours. And just so we're all on the same page as far as the HUD stats, we have VPIP, PFR, number of hands, steel, Fold to steal, three bet, fold to three bet, C bet, fold to C bet, re-steal, fold to re-steal. I also have a fully customized pop-up which we'll bring up if we need to and it has post-flop and also three bet specific pots as well. So in this hand we have pocket fours, there's an open and here it decides to three bet. So a lot of players wouldn't necessarily look at this hand and think about anything else. They just say, okay, I three bet and then move on and see what happened from here. But what I like to do when I'm actually doing a very hardcore analysis is I sit here and I not only think, okay, is my 3-bet good or bad? And, you know, this guy has a 33% fold versus 3-bet, but if we pull up the sample size, we see it's really only 1 out of 3. So not really the kind of thing that we want to read into too, too much. Fold versus re-steal, again, same issue of only 1 out of 3. So we really can't glean too much from his fold versus three better fold versus re-steal stats. His steal attempt is 23%. It is a sample size that's usable. He is a very tight guy, so there's a decent amount of reason to think that he's probably going to find the fold button enough. So the three bet itself can be okay. Size-wise, a little bit on the smaller side, this probably could be 450, give or take, like your standard 9x three bet size, but this isn't awful. And I hope Hero also looked at his left and saw who these players were, made sure that there were no fish, blah, blah, blah. So that's just kind of very, very basic stuff, things you want to be looking for in real time. And that's also something that you want to be thinking about when you're studying and analyzing a hand history is because you have an infinite amount of time when you're studying, sit here and really look at every variable and think about kind of your mental checklist. What goes into your decision before you make your three bet? And that includes who is the open raiser? What are his fold versus three bet numbers? What kind of range do I think he open raises and how would he react to that if I three bet? Of my three bet size, is my math good? Is my math bad? Could I go slightly larger and create more folds? If I went slightly larger, would it create no extra folds? If I went smaller, would it create the same amount of folds as the $4 three bet size? Also considering the players behind you, who are they? Do they look like players that are going to cold four bet? Do they look like fish that are going to cold call your three bet? Or do they look like players that are going to get out of your way quite often? And really that's kind of the mental checklist you would have in a situation like this, assuming there's no extra history or dynamic. So that's kind of, again, when you're looking through a hand history, try to build that checklist as far as what goes into your decision. So the three bet here can be okay. Hero makes it and ends up getting four bet in this situation. So we have a 9-8 with not the highest steal in the world, not the highest 3-bet nor re-steal in the world, and decides to 4-bet you, and Hero decides to shove. So when you're running through hand histories, particularly ones where you're shoving or you're calling draws, you have a lot of time here to think about the math and think about whether or not this play was good. So something I would do is pull out my fold equity calculator, pull out my poker stove, and go from there. And for the record, when I'm doing off-table analysis, I tend to use three tools as a pure standard. I tend to use Poker Stove, I tend to use Flopzilla, and I tend to use my Fold Equity Calculator. These are the three biggest things that I tend to use. I will use other pieces of software if necessary, but these are just kind of my default pieces. So what I would do through here is just 
go back one click and really proof this and see if this was a good shove. So I'll pull out Parker Stove and I'll say, okay, if I shove and my opponent calls, what would he logically call my, my shove with? Probably aces, probably kings, probably queens, probably ace king. It's probably a relatively fair assessment considering he's a very tight guy. Evaluate it and notice that we have 35% equity. So 35.14. And just in here, the effective stack is how much we're shoving, which right now is going to be 55.2. The current pot size is 14.75 and submit it. Okay. And then notice here that we need villain to fold at least 43% of the time to be break even. Well, in this kind of situation, can we really expect this guy to have a 4-bet range that will 4-bet fold that often? That's certainly up for debate. You could dig a little bit deeper, say pull out his pop-up and look at his 4-bet percentage, which is 22%, but that's only 2 out of 9, so we don't want to read into that too, too much. And it's just difficult to assume that someone is... Bye. <laughs>